So you may have seen articles like this shared around and presented as evidence that the Minneapolis police defunding effort has failed in its larger goal, that defunding the police does lead to increased crime. And it's easy to see why people could believe that. So let's push back and examine some faults in this argument. So right off the bat, the biggest thing to point out is that correlation does not equal causation. And in case you forgot, what that means is basically just because two things are correlated doesn't necessarily mean that one caused the other. So for example, in the U.S., late November through December has the highest consumer spending rates. There is a correlation between the rise in spending and falling temperatures. But does that mean that colder temperatures leads to more shopping? Well, we have to examine all the possible correlations. How discounted are the items? Is it fueled by people shopping for Christmas or other winter holidays? Maybe it's the increased marketing for sales at this time. As we can see, there are many variables that have to be examined before we can just say that falling temperatures make people want to shop more. So what other variables might be present with Minneapolis? Well, first, COVID-19. The anxieties of the virus could play a role in increasing crime by affecting our mental states of health, like depression or anxiety. And even more obvious is the economic damage from the virus. The unemployment and economic uncertainty has hit Minneapolis and everywhere else extremely hard. Unemployment in Minneapolis had hit a high of over 10.4% earlier this year. And we do know there is a correlation between crime and unemployment. So it's no surprise that given Minneapolis' increase in unemployment, it would be coupled with an increase in crime. To further amplify that point, we can look at how crime statistics have played out in other metropolitan cities across the U.S. Just doing some basic Google searches shows that essentially every major U.S. city has seen this increase in crime, and many to the same extent as Minneapolis, which discredits the idea that this is something unique to Minneapolis and its defund movement. And lastly, but maybe most importantly, we need to point out that they didn't even defund the police. The city council forwarded a measure to the city's charter commission that would have given voters a chance to eliminate the existing funding requirement for the police department. That would then allow the city to defund and dismantle the department and create a new community safety and violence prevention department. But the proposal never made its way to the ballot after the commission opted for more time. What they did do was take $1.1 million from the police department's budget which had over $190 million, and divest that to the health department in order to fund civilian violence interrupters. Most recently, they have voted to divest $7.7 million next year from law enforcement to fund alternatives to policing, including mental health crisis teams and additional staffers to the city's Office of Violence Prevention. Over $5 million of that divestment coming from savings off new overtime restrictions. So basically a $2 million budget divestment next year. But that won't stop the Washington Post from framing it like this.